Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Shout out to my wife, Tracy, who's getting us ready for training camp. Because we getting ready to talk about... We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. That's right. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. That's right. Not a game. Not the game. Not well, well, we will be talking about the game, okay, in less than a month, because we'll be talking about the Cowboys versus the Rams preseason game. And um, I can't wait to get out to Oxnard next week. Oh, man, thank you. Next week we'll be talking about the Cowboys actually working out on the field and all of the storylines and everything that we've talked about will all be coming to a head. You know, we, with CeeDee Lamb, will he show up? Will he get a contract? Dak Prescott, how's he looking? Is there any problem with the ankle? Micah Parsons, how many uh, new podcasts or, you know, presidents of, you know, uh, Bleacher Reports and things like that that he becomes and so on. And fortunately, what had been extremely slow picked up and started rolling downhill. Skip Bayless, and thank you. So much, Skip Bayless, for giving us something to talk about. And, you know, typically when somebody loses their job, people, you know, will come on board and say nice things about them. And, you know, oh, it was a good run and we appreciate you or it's going to be sad. You'll be missed. You know, we kind of got that when when Kellen Moore left. You remember that? We didn't have anybody talking about, oh, man, we're going to miss Kellen Moore. You know, the Chargers. They're getting a great coach and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, wow, he, he, did, did people like him? I, I'm just asking. It just didn't seem that way. And then there's Skip Bayless. And Skip Bayless, it seems like the knives are out. That people are literally partying in the street and kicking him to the curb to the point where I don't know what's next for Skip Bayless. I don't know what's next. He's got the podcast, which is, I, I pointed out before where I've, you know, used clips from him and things, and I've kind of said, it's kind of dry. It's really, really dry. When you see him there holding the pen and the paper, it's like, okay. You know, I don't typically try to make fun of somebody else's stuff. I don't. I honestly don't um, because doing YouTube is hard, a lot harder than people think. Um, and that's where I kind of took a little bit of offense because, you know, Mike Fisher has been kind of denigrating people that do YouTube. And the thing is, is, you know, it, it's not easy. Anybody who started a YouTube channel and has put themselves out there understands this is not easy. You can go through and you'll do a whole bunch of work. You'll do something and you say, this one is the best thing I have ever done. Everybody is going to love it. And then nobody watches it. And then you do some stupid, silly thing that you don't even want to put out. And you put it out. And that's the thing that everybody watches. That's the funny thing about YouTube. It's hard to get to understand this. And getting to understand and learning how to do this it's not that you can just say, here I am, I was great on television, um, I was great on radio, I'm a journalist, I am blah, 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 that automatically when you come to YouTube, that you expect everybody to bow down to you, but that's not how it works, you got to put in the work. And this is where you wonder, is Skip Bayless cut out for YouTube? This is an interesting clip here because this is kind of amazing to me. Skip Bayless has 150 plus thousand subscribers to the Skip Bayless, to the Skip Bayless show, which is his podcast. I'm not going to make fun of anybody who can get 150 subscribers, 150,000 subscribers. That's putting in the work. I don't care who you are. But it's not getting that much play. This right here was the biggest video that I could find. 
I think it's about 47,000 views right here. And it's Skip Bayless says he wants Little Wayne, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, and Keyshawn Johnson at his roast. Let's listen to this. Who would you want on stage during the Skip Bayless roast? Well, Liam, as you just heard, not a big roast fan to start with. Honestly, I hope I never have to sit through my own roast. So Who like knows, maybe your funeral. for charity, maybe, I guess I would submit to it. But if I did, I would want, number one, my wife at my side, Ernestine. She would have a lot to say, but I don't know that she would go that public with it, but I could be surprised. Number two, I'd want my brother Lil Wayne there. And then in no particular order, I'd want Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp and Keyshawn Johnson, and Michael Irvin and Richard Sherman, my current and former bosses, Eric Shanks, Charlie Dixon. They're all former now. Jamie Horowitz. Norby Williamson. And for sure, my best friend from childhood from Oklahoma City, the radio legend that is Craig Humphreys. But my fear would be that most, if not all, of these relationships would end by the end of that night. That's roasting for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description. Who would you want to... Okay. I'm not sure that anybody wants to do a roast with Skip Bayless. It seems like there's a lot of people that are coming out of the woodwork here that are literally, literally taking the gloves off and telling it all. And um, it doesn't seem to be good. What's next for Skip Bayless? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know that anybody's looking to say, hey, let me partner up with that guy. Um, because he's just become unwatchable. We've talked about it several times. It's insane to me with Fox Sports 1 that the numbers, how bad they plummeted. During the Sweet 16 NCAA Tournament, Undisputed average. Now, this is the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16. Average just 48,000 viewers in its mid morning slot. 48,000. With the amount of money that goes into the production and everything else that is Fox Sports 1. Um, and the numbers in comparison to first take. First take was averaging about half a million plus to Undisputed. This was pretty much all of last year um, after Shannon Sharp left. Averaged about 120,000, but then it went even worse in the beginning of 2024. And what we may be seeing is we may be seeing more of a sea change in how these shows are going because I think that a lot of the typical – Jerry Springer-esque fight is actually just done. I think people are ready to actually get some real news, real sports and stuff, conversations as opposed to we're going to tell you what you think and we're just going to trash people while we're doing it. So you know what's next for Skip Bayless? Let us know. But man... 
I'm not even sure how, at this point, Fox keeps him on. It's kind of like, you know what? We'll pay you the rest of this contract. Why don't you just kind of go now? Because it's getting uglier and uglier by the minute. All righty, good people. I hope you've had a great Taco Tuesday and that all your taco dreams came true. Peace out.